In football, it seems like we're always on to the next idea before we know it. Let's take a look at five football plans that never really seem to go anywhere. The Jamie Vardy movie. Remember that Jamie Vardy movie idea? Whatever happened to that? Back during that incredible Leicester City season, when the likes of Danny Simpson and Wes Morgan became Premier League champions, strange old year, a Jamie Vardy biopic was in the works. Now, sure, his career has been a classic rags to riches tale, from downing vodka and Skittles on a park bench in non-league football a few years ago, to netting in 11 consecutive games, lifting the Premier League title and scoring at Euro 2016. But it's not like this hasn't been done before. Have we all forgotten the Newcastle United Centre movie back in 2005 when Santiago Munez, an albeit fictional character, even if his in-game play was blatantly stolen from Lauren Robert, who just happened to have the same haircut, funny that, the man came from actual poverty. Well, according to reports, the writers behind The Fighter were drafted in, as well as the aforementioned Gold Scribe, to work alongside producers from The King's Speech. Then the speculation just went into overdrive. Apparently Vinnie Jones had been cast as Nigel Pearson, admittedly not a bad shout considering both probably have the capability of strangling their grandmother over Christmas dinner if she refused to pass the gravy. Louis Tomlinson was reportedly lined up to play Vardy. If anybody saw the former One Direction singer get knocked into next week by Gabriel Bond the Whore in a charity match a few years ago, I think we can all agree it wasn't for his football ability. That was all at the back end of 2016. Since then it's gone very quiet, ever since Claudio Ranieri was given the boot, Leicester were dumped out of the Champions League and slumped back to mid-table. Is the movie going to happen considering not even the tea lady is being cast? I'm gonna say probably not. Glasgow in the Premier League. Celtic and Rangers are like the 11 year olds forced to sit at the kiddie table while all the grown ups enjoy the dinner party. Clearly the 11 year olds are too sophisticated and worldly to be making conversation with the snotty 4 year olds whose day consisted of rolling over, but they've been refused entry by the grown ups. The Premier League is that dinner table and Celtic and Rangers have both been yearning to dine in it for years, having dominated Scotland for decades. Well, Rangers used to anyway. In 2009, Bolton chairman Phil Gartside had submitted a proposal to the Premier League for a two-tier league between 36 and 40 teams where the Scottish Giants would have been invited to join. How very charitable of Bolton Wanderers to think about the Glaswegians, but it never came to anything, with the Premier League flat out refusing the idea. Probably just as well for Rangers, within three years they effectively exploded. The Dublin Dons. Let's be honest, the League of Ireland is severely lacking in quality. I am Saying that, safe in the knowledge that most of you have never watched the game. However, Ireland nearly adopted a Premier League team, and no, I'm not talking about Manchester United or Liverpool, despite the legions of jerseys. Back in 1996, Wimbledon FC were to be relocated to the capital and renamed the Dublin Dons. Considering the Wimbledon fans were already pretty furious when they found out that their club was moving 70 miles up the road to Milton Keynes, I can only imagine what they'd have thought of making a trip to the airport every fortnight. The brains behind the move? Uh, Joe Kinnear and Eamon Dunphy. Right. The League of Ireland objected, claiming this would have spelled disaster for the domestic game, which, lads, is already kind of hanging by a thread. All 22 clubs voted down the plan. A Champions League playoff. Back during the 09-10 season, with the likes of Man City and Spurs neck and neck for Champions League qualification, a suggestion was lofted that the playoff for fourth place might be introduced. In March 2010, though, the Premier League revealed it wouldn't pursue this idea, which had been put forward at a meeting. According to West Ham co-owner David Gold, it was just a physical thing, finding time in the calendar. We certainly looked it and the board looked at it but said physically we can't do it. The clubs that will be involved in the playoff could also be involved in the FA Cup and Champions League so it just could not be done. The 39th game. Ah oh, yes, the most infamous one. The proposal that sends shivers up your spine at the very reminder of it. The one that represents everything wrong with the modern game. The greed, the complete lack of thought for the fans. Putting monetary gains ahead of actual competitive fairness and sense. Game 39. In 2008 the Premier League floated the idea of playing a 39th game abroad just chucking one extra game into the calendar just for the crack. This was almost universally shot down within minutes of Richard Scudamore suggesting it. The list of reasons against it are endless. Where do I start? Right, okay, it's alright for the fat cats and the leather suits to expand their brand overseas, absolutely. But how are we supposed to expect the average football fan who's been forking out money to watch his club home and away all season suddenly splash out on a pair of tickets to Vietnam to cheer his side on? Can you imagine how empty Arsenal fan TV would be as Robbie desperately scrounges outside the Dodgers stadium for the LA version of Troops? Not only that, but the whole idea of a league table format is that you play everyone twice home and away. That's how you make it a fair and even competition. That's how you determine who the winners and the losers are. When you introduce a wildcard third fixture into the mix, you screw up the entire thing. Manchester United could be playing Stoke City three times a season, while Chelsea's last game could be against Man City. Like, how is that fair? It was just a money pocketing scheme and was effectively thrown out. Six years later, Scudamore claimed he was still in favour of the idea, claiming it will happen at some point. Christ, let's hope not. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe.